A lot of people are out there wondering, why is there such a low rate of permanent loan modifications? Have you read about it under 5%? There's got to be a reason for it. Well, we've got one of the reasons for you today. There are banks out there cashing in big time during the banking crisis because they reject loan modifications for one reason. They make more money with foreclosures and short sales. Let's talk about One West Bank and what they're doing. One West Bank was formed by these big time guys. Billion, a billionaire's row right there. Michael Dell from Dell Computers. John Paulson right in the middle there. Back in 2007, that guy, he called the housing bubble burst. More importantly, he positioned himself over the next two years to profit to the tune of $20 billion. So these guys set up a bank to, to make some purchases in, t in this current market. Some people are calling them the greatest private equity investors ever behind these purchases. And they're saying, hey, maybe you should take notice. That's what we're saying to you as well. Now, the strategy here, these guys l are lining up discounted assets to purchase. They're using leverage, a quick restructuring, and a quick exit for a high rate of return in just a short period of time. And here's the kicker. As an added bonus, they're using your money, your taxpayer money, to eliminate risk. Let me explain. The first bank they purchased, IndyMac Bank, they failed in 2008. At the time, they had about $20 billion in assets. In July of 2008, the FDIC had to step in and take over IndyMac. Shortly after that, One West buys the assets of IndyMac Bank. Those billionaires I just showed you, they threw in $1.5 billion in cash. They, lever they, they got some loans, they leveraged the rest, and they were able to buy $20 billion in assets. There's a, a sweet deal between One West Bank and the FDIC. Part of it was a nice $9 billion loan, but more importantly was the shared loss agreement with the following terms. To purchase the first mortgages at 70% of balance, home equity lines of credit at 58% of the balance. But the most important thing is this line right here. In the event of a short sale or foreclosure, the FDIC would cover 80 to 95% of the loss. But the key term is the loss. What is it? The loss is determined by the original loan amount, not the amount that One West paid for the loan. So what does that provide for this new bank? A guarantee and full insurance above the price they paid for all of these loans. And it gives them, through a foreclosure or a short sale, an easy path to profits. And it gives them incentive to avoid loan modifications. Check this out in a real example from fall of 09, barely six months after they started this business. One West purchased the loan. The original loan was $485,200. One West purchased that loan for 70% of that number, so $334,600. Now, what happened is it's an underwater property. Homeowner fell behind but lined up a short sale that would net the bank $241,000, which doesn't look like a great deal for the bank, does it? Uh, with a purchase price on the loan of $334,000, a, a purchase price on the short sale, $241,000, it looks like a $93,000 loss for the lender, but it didn't work out that way. No loss at all. In fact, a highly profitable gain in a short period of time for One West. This is how they did it. The original loan, remember, that's how they determine the insurance. The original loan was 485000 According to the shared loss agreement with the FDIC, they insure 80 to 95 percent of the loss from the original loan balance, not the price they paid. So the original loan balance of 485000 minus the net from the short sale of 241000 leaves a loss of $244,200. What happens next is the FDIC steps in and pays 80% of that loss. It provides a check to One West for over $195,000. Now, what do we need to do next? We need to add that up. Take a look at it. The net from the short sale, $241,000. 
the FDIC insurance, 195000 It adds up to a total of $436,000 and some change on what was the initial price again? Hold on, was it only 334000 They've got total proceeds of $436,000. The short sale provided them with a profit of, are you ready for this? Over $100,000. So with that, you have an incentive to avoid loan modifications and pursue a foreclosure or a short sale, and that's precisely what, what One West is out there doing. Now, the financial incentives are out there for them to reject these loan modifications. One West and the FDIC share, uh, agreement, why take the loan modification at a loss when you can get a short sale that will put six figures in your pocket? And that's precisely what One West is out there doing. They have financial incentives to reject loan modification. So is it really any surprise that they are one of the most difficult lenders to work with a loan modification? Of course not. It's all about money in this situation. Now, I hope this can help to explain these shared loss agreements explain some of the reasons behind the low success rate with permanent loan modifications. For some of these banks that have that sweetheart deal, it's easier for them. It's more profitable for them to pursue short sales and foreclosures. Now, One West Bank, again, barely a year old. They're out there trying to get good press. In December of 2009, there was an article about them in the LA Times. The quote was, the bank has pursued community outreach. Well, here's one judge that will probably disagree with that. In November of 2009, he called their loan modification program harsh, repugnant, shocking, and repulsive. And it is shocking. But what's really shocking is that in the first six months of business, these guys from One West already pulling in the money. Net operating income uh, in just the first uh, six months of over $700 million. They're out there taking advantage of that short sale and foreclosure market. There are opportunities for you to do so as well. Check out the video below at New Outlook Properties, and we want to talk to you. Thank you.